Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A-plus certification training course on planning a Windows operating system upgrade. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about the requirements from CompTIA exam 220-601, the Essentials Exam section 3.2, where we need to know how to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade operating systems. So we'll talk about upgrade considerations and implementation in this module. You'll learn specifically what the upgrade paths are for a Windows copy that you might have. Can you go from Windows NT to Windows 2000 or Windows XP? We'll talk about that. We'll also discuss the hardware and software considerations you want to keep in mind before doing this upgrade and afterwards. We'll talk about updates and service packs and why those are so important to the upgrade process. We'll need to talk about it backing up existing data. And finally, what you need to do when you're ready to start the upgrade. Let's start by discussing upgrade paths. Let's say you're running Windows NT, you're running Windows 95, you're running Windows 98, and you're ready to upgrade to something that's newer and greater. Maybe you're ready to go to Windows XP. So the question is, can you even upgrade? Is this something where you have to completely erase everything on your hard drive and start over? Or can you keep your existing documents and your existing configurations for the most part and simply upgrade them to a new version and leave everything intact on the hard drive? Well, here's a nice chart that I created that shows you if you are running Windows 95, 98, Windows Millennium Edition, we call that Windows Me, Windows NT Workstation, and Windows 2000 Professional, can you move to these other uh, operating systems? And can you move to upgrade to Windows 2000? Can you upgrade to Windows XP? Notice you can upgrade to Windows 2000 Professional from almost everything except Windows Millennium Edition. And that's just a decision that Microsoft made with that operating system that they weren't going to support a direct upgrade into Windows 2000 Professional. To upgrade to Windows XP Professional, this is not Windows XP Home. We are referring to Windows XP Pro here. Uh, you can upgrade from every operating system except Windows 95. Windows 95 was uh, just so old that uh, Microsoft decided we're not going to have a direct path between 95 and XP. You can go from 95 to 2000 and then go from 2000 to XP, but you can't go directly to Windows XP. And that was really just a decision made on Microsoft's part for from a development effort. Uh, we're already supporting 98ME NT Workstation in 2000, and that seemed to work pretty well for almost everybody out there. If somebody's still running Windows 95, there's, uh, there's bigger problems to worry about than if you can upgrade to Windows XP at this point. Before you begin considering whether you would like to upgrade your operating system, keep in mind that the hardware and the software that you're using may or may not work in your upgraded operating system. Everything has to work together. You've now purchased applications. You've downloaded applications from the internet. And you're using them in Windows NT. And you're ready to move to Windows 2000. You may find when you get to Windows 2000, that application doesn't work anymore. That printer isn't working anymore. You need a new print driver that works in that operating system. So all of your applications are operating system specific. All of your printers and other pieces of hardware, your video cards, and everything else is operating system system specific. So there's a little work you have to do beforehand to make sure that everything you have now is going to work properly when you get into that new operating system. Fortunately, Microsoft has created a number of tools available online and tools available on the operating system CDs for Windows 2000 Professional and for Microsoft XP, Windows XP Professional that uh, analyzes and checks to see if the existing hardware you have is compatible with the new version of this operating system that you're running. For Windows 2000, there's a Windows 2000 Readiness Analyzer. And it's this checkupgrade.exe file. It's on the CD. You can also download it from Microsoft's website. Just look for Windows 2000 Readiness Analyzer. And it will go on your system and look at your software and look at your hardware and help you determine if what you're running today is going to support Windows 2000. There's also a version of this for Windows XP, except it's called the Windows XP Upgrade Advisor. This is also on the CD-ROM for Windows XP. It's useful if you have an active internet connection while you're running this because it does check for updates. Obviously, if this is shipping on a CD-ROM and they're constantly adding new pieces of hardware and software into the Upgrade Advisor, it'd be nice to have the latest updates. And so the Upgrade Advisor ch recognizes this, and it checks online to see what the latest database is and checks against all of those things. So before you do any type of upgrades to Windows 2000 and Windows XP, run through these advisors and these analyzers. See if it's giving you some feedback. If everything comes back with a clean bill of health, you can feel pretty comfortable about doing the upgrade. But if it's says that it doesn't recognize your printer as being something that's compatible, you may want to go to the manufacturer of that printer and see if there is an updated driver that will work for the operating system that you're planning to upgrade to. 
Whenever you're moving from one operating system to another, the new operating system is completely different. And it has its own level of service packs, its own set of security patches, its own methods for updates. And you need to take, keep that in mind whenever you're doing this upgrade, that once you finish the upgrade, you may need to apply some of these service packs to your system. And that's because the CD-ROM that you've gotten with that operating system on it is already old. When it's pressed, it's done, and it's sent to you. Well, some time goes by. And just in a month's time, Microsoft releases security patches for their Windows products. So your CD, if you're going to upgrade from a CD, it's already out of date. You can pretty much bet that you need to apply some updates. So check the CD-ROM. See what version of Service Pack is already on the CD-ROM. One of the nice things that Microsoft does is they'll put out a version of their operating system. Then if they put out a service pack, they'll begin building new CDs that already integrate that service pack so that you can do the upgrade and not then have to go through the process of installing an entire service pack. And that can save you some time. So check your CD-ROM. There's always going to be new operating system updates, and these come directly from Microsoft. There is a Microsoft update process within the operating system itself. And we'll look at that during our upgrade process in the next couple of videos, where we go into the operating system itself, go to Windows Update is what it's called, and it will update your operating system with the latest and greatest patches. And it'll give you patches that it feels are really important, and then it gives you lists of patches that are recommended for your operating system and what you're running. Also check for device driver updates. Video drivers, printers, these are really important pieces of hardware that are constantly getting new driver updates. If you have a specialized piece of hardware or an older piece of hardware, check with the manufacturer. Make sure you have the latest device driver. A buggy device driver can create havoc for the entire operating system. So making sure that you have the latest device driver can often create a new level of stability within your operating system. When Windows XP first came out, there were problems with some of the printer drivers. There were problems with some of the video drivers. Now that that operating system is very mature, the drivers that, that you can download from manufacturers tend to be very stable and very reliable. So make sure you have the latest versions of those. And finally, you're going to need to make sure you're at the latest service pack for the operating system. They, these are big service packs, too. These are not a simple, trivial download. The Windows 2000 Service Pack 4, which is the latest, is 129 megabytes. The Windows XP Service Pack 3, 316 megabytes. So if you're over a slower internet connection, this might take some time for you. Now, if you've gotten the CDs in front of you, you may have a service pack already integrated into the CD. If it looks like this CD, which is my Windows XP Professional CD, you'll notice this is one of the original ones. So there's nothing on the CD that has anywhere on it any type of service pack associated with it. So I can bet when I install this, there is no service pack. And Windows XP, as we just saw, is already at service pack 3. Fortunately, you can usually just install Service Pack 3, and it will update it to 3. You don't have to install 1, and then 2, and then 3. But if you do have a CD that does have a Service Pack installed on it, if I was to do my upgrade to my Dell computer, this is the CD that comes with my Dell. It's Windows XP Professional Service Pack 2. So if I upgrade using this CD, I'm only at SP2. And we now know that we are at Service Pack 3. So as I mentioned, your CDs will be old. This one is an older one. Once I install this one, I'm still going to have to go back and install Service Pack 3 right on top of it. Before you begin an operating system upgrade, or really any major update at all to any operating system, you're going to want to back up the existing data. Now, backups themselves are extremely important because the upgrade process, although it works a vast majority of the time, they're not foolproof. There will be circumstances where you upgrade your computer, you turn it on, and it doesn't start up. It gives an error. It blue screens. It has some type of device conflict, and it's not working. And now suddenly, all of your documents, all of your pictures, all of your music that were on that older hard drive running that operating system before are still on there, but now they're inaccessible. You can't get to them. So the having a backup can really save you. There's many ways to do backups. We have other videos that talk about doing backups. But make sure you get a copy of your data in some form prior to doing this backup process. At a minimum, make sure you at least get your user documents. Make sure you at least get your music, your documents, uh, your Word files, your, your spreadsheets, anything that is important to you. On my personal computers, I have, I have years of tax information. I have tons of family pictures. I have a lot of music and podcasts. I'm going to want to back those up. And even if the operating system is something I can't go back to, at least I have my important files. And I can load these applications from scratch. I'll load the 
the new version of iTunes. I'll load my new uh, picture viewing software, but at least I have my end user documents. One thing that's nice is that Microsoft includes with Windows 2000 and Windows XP some backup utilities. So if you aren't don't have a third party piece of software, you're not sure what to use, there's some really nice wizard based step me through the process of backing up data front ends for Windows 2000 and Windows XP. So take advantage of those. They'll write out to a, a DVD ROM you can, or read write. You can send the information across the network. You can copy it to another hard drive. These utilities are very easy to use and they may save you if you're ever having a problem doing an upgrade. Or what I like to do is just image the entire drive. If you've never performed an imaging, this is what they do in very large organizations. There's a number of companies that make software to use imaging systems at home where you have a, a separate, maybe a USB connected hard drive. It will take an entire photocopy, if you will, of your hard drive and compress it up and send it off and store it on a separate hard drive. That way, if I ever need to rebuild this, we do this from the ground up, rebuild from metal, we, we tend to call it, where you just, if you need to recover everything, you just completely replace what used to be on your drive. And it's done usually really in a matter of minutes. It's very, very fast in the way that it operates, depending on how much data you have on your hard drive. But it's very quick. I call it the easy way out, because I just make a copy, and I've got everything. And if I ever need to go back, I just copy everything back over and I haven't messed up messed up anything. Now if I have created new documents in the meantime, I really can't keep that. I really can't go back because I'm moving everything all at once. But one of the nice parts about imaging is I can also do incremental updates. So I can keep that image up to date all the time. So if I ever need to go back and completely restart from what I know is a good known configuration, imaging is a good way to go. In review, we've now put everything together we need to begin our upgrade process. We know what paths are available to move to Windows 2000 Professional and Windows XP Professional. We know what hardware and software considerations we could think about before doing an upgrade. We need to have our service packs and our driver updates available to us. Let's make sure we get our data backed up. And finally, we can begin the upgrade process. And then the next couple of videos, we're going to step through all of those upgrades. We're going to show you exactly how to upgrade to Windows 2000 and exactly how to upgrade to Windows XP, which will be really important for your CompTIA exams. For more free CompTIA videos, for our message boards, and much more, come visit our website, freeaplus.com.